Thank you, Bruce. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Reverend Kathy. Welcome to Unity North Spiritual Center here in Coon Rapids, Minnesota. We are an inclusive community. We, so, so whoever you are, wherever you are on your spiritual path, you're welcome at Unity North, and we're glad you're with us today. We're also part of a greater worldwide unity movement. We are the publishers of the Daily Word magazine, and we've been holding 134 years of prayer vigil through Silent Unity, the prayer ministry of the unity movement. So prayer is the heart and soul of unity. And always after service, we have a, a prayer chaplain available to pray with you. And our prayer chaplain today is Nancy. She's waving. Nancy Helvig, and um, you can give her a call right after service. Her number will show up, or it is showing up in the chat right now, and then uh, we'll show up again in announcements. So just take the time to let her pray with you. It's a wonderful experience. All right. Thank you, Nancy. Our, our production team today is Tracy and Martha. A little help from Justin. <laughs> And our worship assistant is Wendy Erickson. And we welcome back Bruce Menier Bell with us today. And let's speak our vision and mission statements first, and then uh, we can do our opening song. All right, let's see our vision first. Centered in prayer, we create for all a world of love, harmony, and abundance. And our mission is celebrating spirit, exploring truth, awakening hearts, inspiring dreams, serving community. And you note our values at the bottom, those are our core foundational beliefs here at Unity North. It's good to be reminded now and then. All right, and with that, please stand for our opening song. There's sunshine in my soul today. All together. There is sunshine in my soul today. It is glorious and bright. Ever glowing with a warming ray. For the Christ is my light. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, as the peaceful, happy moments roll. For I behold the Christ in every face, and there's sunshine in my soul. There is springtime in my soul today, I know that God is here. The notes of peace sing in my heart, the joys of grace appear oh there's sunshine blessed sunshine as the peaceful happy moments roll for i behold the christ in every face and there's sunshine in my soul there is gladness in my soul today and hope and love and praise for blessings from the light of God are brightening all my days. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, as the peaceful, happy moments roll. For I behold the Christ in every face, and there's sunshine in my soul. Amen. Thank you. for your music. Good morning to everyone. I'm Wendy Erickson. I'm your worship assistant today. And this is the time in our service when we greet one another. So if you are on Zoom, please turn on your cameras if you are able. And who is joining us for the first time today on Zoom? Do we have anybody? We're hoping you can wave. And if you can unmute yourself, let us know where you're from. Okay. And if you're in the sanctuary and new, 
can you please wave as well and let us know you're here. Oh, oh we have some new people here in the back. So we have some new folks here in the back. Thank you for coming. We're grateful that you are here. Thanks. Um, at this time, we're going to take a moment for prayer requests. So I'm going to ask you to take a breath or two to further center yourselves because that centering started with the time we took to greet one another, acknowledging our presence here together with one purpose. So as you breathe in, bring peace, love, and joy within. And release stress, worry, and fear on your exhales. Instead of saying our requests aloud, we invite you to speak a name or prayer request silently in the sanctuary. Or if you're in the privacy of your home, you could say them out loud. And I ask that we hold these requests in silence. We give thanks in advance for answered prayers, and we say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Let us remain centered and still as I read our day, today's daily word. For Sunday, March 17th, 2024, today's daily word is prayer. I feel the presence and power of God as I pray. In the revealing word, Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore described prayer as the most highly accelerated mind action known. This awareness is my comfort and assurance as I release my worldly concerns and feel the presence of God. As I pray, I immerse myself in the silence so I can be still and know. From this place of deep communion, I relax and focus my attention on the divine ideas of life, love, wisdom, strength, and order, which are always mine to claim. As these spiritual truths flourish in my consciousness, thoughts of my troubles and worries fade from my mind. In the past, I may have believed prayer was a way of asking God for help and solace. Now I understand it as one of the best ways of helping and uplifting myself. From Psalm 46, verse 10, be still and know that I am God. Today's daily word from March 17th is prayer. I feel the presence and power of God as I pray. And now Bruce will do a song to prepare us for meditation. Holy light, holy light, ignite each heart with the truth I am, thou art. Wisdom, peace, and joy are mine as I am pure love divine. I am light in whom all live. I am life to all I 
I give. I am perfect, I am whole, one in body, mind, and soul. I am light, I am the flame, within all I am the same. On the altar of each heart, fire of love, I am thou art. or meditation. Let's take several deep breaths as you feel that wave of relaxation move from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Saying to yourself, I am completely and fully relaxed. On Tuesday evening, the 19th is spring equinox, the official beginning of spring. As the sun's rays strike our planet more directly, the earth responds with newness and freshness. Prehistoric priesthoods set this day apart as sacred, as a feast to celebrate the resurrection of the earth. The sun, radiant and healing, revitalizes the dark and dormant as days and nights are again of equal length on the day of equinox. May the eternal experience of spring prepare each of us for a personal rebirth and resurrection. May it be a pledge sign that life rises out of death. This time is magical, filled with hidden spirits and sounds. May you be attentive to the rebirth of green life, pushing up through the earth, even if it's still hidden from view. May you feel in your body the energy of the sun calling for newness and life. The sun is a reflection and metaphor of the one light present in all beings, in all things. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. These familiar words from the book of Genesis remind us of the power of God that not only created light in the beginning, but continues to create light in our lives every moment. The light that was in the beginning shines on us today in the smiles on the faces of friends, in the love we have for our dear ones, and in those moments of greater enlightenment The light that was in the beginning still shines in answered prayer. So we join together now in prayer for the light to burst forth in our planet. We pray for our environment and the balance and equanimity of Mother Nature. We join together in prayer for whatever concerns you have in your own life or in the lives of others. Know that the light of God surrounds you and your loved ones in this moment, bathing you and those for whom you pray in the healing light and love and power of the Holy Spirit. God is blessing you right now as you go into deeper silence.
Thank you, God, for the light that is always present with us. We know that just as Jesus and other masters were illumined, so too can we be illumined, filled, and surrounded with divine light. As we go forth this day, we turn away from any darkness or negativity, and we focus on the light. We are inspired to express light-filled thoughts, words, and actions. I am filled with divine light. We are filled with divine light. We rejoice with all the web of life as the season of spring begins. And we say, thank you, Mother, Father, God. And so it is. Amen. We are all angels of light. You do not dance alone. We are all angels of light encircling the earth. We are all angels of light bringing the spirit home. We are all angels of light here for rebirth. I'm here for love. How about you? And I know that's enough. How about you? And I'm living and loving it, giving it all that I am. I'm here to grow. How about you? There's so much we don't know. How about you? And I'm living it, loving it, giving it all that I am. We are all angels of light. You do not dance alone. We are all angels of light encircling the earth. We are all angels of light bringing the spirit home. We are all angels of light here for rebirth. We are all angels of light here for rebirth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Barris. So my lesson today is not on St. Patrick's Day, but to honor it, I have a couple of riddles and a joke. And we also have a leprechaun here with us today. <laughs> So what do you call a fake stone in Ireland? A shamrock. <laughs> Why shouldn't you iron a four-leaf clover? You might be pressing your luck. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I can't do Irish accents. I wish I could. They're really difficult, actually. But O'Reilly, he said, I went out drinking on St. Patrick's Day and it got late and um, I took a bus home. Now that may not be a big deal to any of you, but I've never driven a bus before. <laughs> so anyway, I just want to say happy St. Patrick's Day to all of you. Hope you don't end up driving any buses home tonight. <laughs> Since this is the Sunday before the spring equinox, the theme of light had to prevail today. From the, the beginning, mystery schools have existed within ancient temples of all cultures, all designed to aid the aspirant in his or her awakening, awakening or spiritual enlightenment. Levels of mastery are attained, so one has to prove oneself worthy of receiving greater light. Because the greater the light and the energy within one, the more potential to use the great creative powers for good or ill. 
just as you would not hand an untrained person a surgeon's knife and say, go do surgery, so too would you be certain that an initiate on the spiritual path is ready for the power he or she will gain with greater knowledge. And that power is the power of light. World literature abounds with stories of magicians turning away from the light. Saruman the Wise is an example in Lord of the Rings. Though Gandalf's teacher Saruman succumbed to darkness, Gandalf resisted his temptation to abuse power and submit to the dark side. He did not need the attention that the ego demands. Like Gandalf, we too must overcome the temptations of ego, such as fear and greed and all those false beliefs that come, with, come from a central belief that we are separate from God. The truth is we are all one, one with the divine, with the divine light which is present in all of creation. And we all have the potential to be light bearers, or we could say light workers, to stand always in and for the light of truth. Light represents consciousness. When we do not understand a thing, we say we must bring it to light. If we're confused, we say our process needs more light. When a sudden idea reorders our thoughts, we say the light came on. And when a person is fully conscious, we say that he or she is enlightened. So we receive loving guidance and assistance at each moment. And at each moment, we are prompted and encouraged to move into greater light. So the spring equinox is all about the light of the sun. It is the first day of spring in the northern hemisphere which takes place this Tuesday, March 19th, at 10.06 p.m. Central Daylight Time. And it marks the moment when the sun sits directly over the Earth's equator as it heads northward. So the northern and southern hemispheres share the sun's rays equally at the equinox, and night and day are roughly the same length. So think of that on Tuesday night around 10 o'clock, that right at that moment, the sun is above the equator and we are equal in the north, northern and southern hemispheres. Spring is a time when we celebrate the sun's increasing rays, flowers blooming, trees blossoming, greater beauty returning to the planet because of greater sunlight. We feel and revel in the brightness and warmth of the light. Remember that story of Nazaruddin, the fool of the Sufi tradition? He was called the fool for a reason. But he also uh, felt called to move into greater light. The story's been around a while. But he was on the ground searching for his keys that he lost. He was hunting frantically, and a friend came by and said, Mullah! What are you searching for? What are you doing? And Nazaruddin responded, I've lost my keys. I'm searching for my keys. And his friend gets down on his hands and knees and searching with him. They're down on the ground for a long time looking. Finally, the friend says, Mola, can, can you remember where, maybe more specifically, where you lost your keys? And Nazaruddin replies, Yes, I lost my keys down the street near my house. <laughs> And the friend asked, Mullah, then why in the world are we searching here? And he says, well, there's more light here, of course. <laughs> See, we are guided always toward the light, and we always have choice. Yet at the same time, we do not want to become afraid of the dark. Darkness is not all evil, not all ego. It's also feminine. It is silence. It's the stillness of meditation and the depth of Mother Earth. Theologian Matthew Fox said, we are all questers after light, which has resulted in the light bulb, in electricity, in neon lights, 
From that came the radio, then television, a new kind of light machine that combines eyes and ears. And one result is we have become afraid of the dark, afraid of no light, of silence, of imagelessness. We become greedy for more images, more light, more profits, more goodies. And so our spirituality needs to contain both light and dark, for there is a dark side of the light, and there is a light side of darkness. And there's a story in Greek mythology about that, way about a, about a youth named Phaethon, who journeys to the palace of the sun. And it is such a radiant, dazzling place that most mortals cannot enter, let alone ever find it. But this youth, Phaethon, walks into the throne room of the, the god of the sun. And he, he said, and the, and the sun god asks, what is your purpose here? And he says, well, I have come to find out if you are really my father, as my mother has told me you are. And so the sun god takes off his fiery mantle so the youth can look on him with more ease. And he answers, yes, I am your father. And to prove that to you, I will take an oath on the river Styx and give you anything you ask of me. And the youth says, the only thing I want is for one day to drive your chariot across the sky as you do. And in that moment, the sun god realizes his terrible folly, for he has taken an oath on the river Styx, and it cannot be broken. But he pleads with his son. He said, I, I have taken this oath, and I have to fulfill my promise, but I urge you to change your mind. Change your mind. No mortal can drive that chariot. And even the gods can't drive it other than me. He said, even the king of the gods himself, himself cannot drive that chariot. And but the, the son was so caught up in the power and the glory that would be his in this moment, in this day, that he refused to listen. And so the sun god said, the ascent is so high when you, by the time you reach the midheaven, that it's unbelievable. Even the sun god, even I dare not look down. And the descent is so steep that the sea gods are amazed that the sun does not disappear forever. Well, so Phaethon drives the chariot, and as he begins the ascent, the exhilaration in those moments is beyond belief, but it lasts only moments. And he loses control of the steeds. And by the time he reaches the midheaven, the terror of the descent is upon him, and that's all he feels, nothing but terror. The plunge is so great, the horses go mad and begin to burn the earth. And Mother Earth finally cries out, and Zeus responds by sending a thunderbolt to put the youth out of his misery and save the earth. Now this story is a sad story in some ways, but it speaks to each one of us in listening to the power of God, the light, the Christ presence within us, rather than to the ego, the need for power, the need for control, in which we therefore often lose control. The symbols of the sun, of light, of fire, have long been symbols of spirit or God in the world, mythology or scripture. In all the myths, the sun symbolizes spirit. And in this Greek myth of Phaethon, the chariot of the sun 
represents a means by which we enter into the presence and power of God, by which we become the Christ. And the most significant vehicle we have in our lives to enter into that light, that presence and power, is the vehicle of prayer and intention. This story of faith entails of a wild ride where the driver of the chariot loses total control. And you see, one must be ready for the full power of spirit. This is why the spiritual journey is a step-by-step -step process. And there are countless stories of individuals who've unleashed the kundalini power and have burned themselves up. There are many individuals who've tried to have awakening through drugs and have literally burned their circuits. But with prayer, we take a practice ride in a chariot. We learn how to keep control of the reins, how to keep our thoughts and emotions and intentions positive how to know where we are going, and how to fly to the most ecstatic heights imaginable. This is so important because when we are dealing with the challenges in our lives, we feel out of control, especially when we are hit with more than one challenge at a time. We need a vehicle that we can direct, and at the same time that helps us to gain control of our life. You know, when I first came into unity, I did not really understand this positive affirmation thing. You know, um, the Christ within me now forgives through me. That didn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, what made more sense was, dear God, please help me forgive. You know, that beseeching prayer. And, you know, it, it made more sense for, for God to seem more personal until I realized that our prayers are not to change God. The prayers are to condition and change us. Omnipresence cannot be twisted to our will. Prayer changes us and is answered according to our belief in it. Pray and expect your prayer to be answered. Do not pray for something bad not to happen, but pray rather for something good to happen. Let me say that again. Don't pray for something bad not to happen. Pray for something good to happen. God answers every prayer to the extent that we allow it. When the mind is filled with doubt and fear, the chariot can veer off course. The channel for our good is then narrowed. But as we come to know the nature of God as absolute good, then our fear is eliminated. Our thoughts, and most particularly our intentions, are prayers. A thought is energy or light that has been shaped by consciousness. Author Gary Zukav, in his really fantastic book, Seed of the Soul, said, we are a dynamic being of light that at each moment informs the universal energy that flows through us. We do this with each thought and with each intention. We change the way we shape the light which is flowing through us by changing our consciousness. We do this, for example, when we challenge a negative pattern such as anger, and consciously choose to replace it with compassion, or when we challenge impatience and consciously choose to understand and appreciate the needs of others. This changes our experience. So every experience and every change reflects an intention. And an intention is not only a desire, it is the use of our will. It becomes like a laser beam of light. It is a prayer. So we create our reality with our intentions, and intentions shape light. I love that. Intentions shape light. They set light into motion. So say we know this, we're all going to go out and be light workers, setting positive intention, the world will be transformed, right? 
No problem. Well, we'll just do it today. It, I mean, that's true. It may be that simple, but it is not that easy. Actually invoking the light and setting an intention for good can sometimes bring the ego out to play. It can bring temptation. You say, I'm going to lose weight, and then a caseload of candy bars are delivered to your house accidentally. <laughs> or, I'm going to make more money, and then suddenly the expenses have doubled. Anyone ever experienced something like that? Well, temptations are not traps, however. Our souls are offered the opportunity to challenge those parts of itself that resist the light. The light bringing energy that tempted the person Jesus of Nazareth, who became the Christ, and that tempted the person Siddhartha Gautama, who became the Buddha, is the same energy that tempts us. When we consciously invoke greater light in any area we consciously invoke the parts of ourself that are not whole to come into the foreground of our life with each recurrence of anger or jealousy or fear we are given the choice to challenge it or to give into it the journey to wholeness to the palace of the sun or greater light in our lives requires that we look honestly, openly, and with courage into ourself, into our feelings and our perceptions, our values and our actions. It's a journey through our defenses and beyond so we can experience consciously the nature of our personality, face what it has produced in our life, and choose to change that when needed. And we have this most fabulous vehicle of prayer and the power of intention. We can help ourselves with it, and we can also help others by praying for them and by holding powerful intention. You know, here's an example of that shared by Rosemary Ellen Guiley in a book she wrote about people who were helped by the prayers of silent unity. This is a prayer uh, story from a, or a letter from a woman in Colorado. She writes to silent unity. From the depths of a thankful and joyous heart, I want to give this testimony for the power of united prayer. My young granddaughter was injured critically in a car accident, and after five hours of surgery, the doctors gave her no chance for recovery as they later informed her parents. When we received the message of her injury about noon that day, a very dear friend immediately called Silent Unity for your help in faith and prayer. At 4 p.m. that afternoon, two doctors rushed into the room where the anxious family waited and announced, we have just had a miracle. There's no way to express in words the thankfulness and the abiding faith that prayers do have an awesome power for instant healing. Our loved one is now almost recovered from a ruptured liver and crushed chest. Indeed, she expects to return to school soon. So we pray and we hold intentions for ourselves and others. And author Carol Adrian once spoke of the dynamic between setting an intention and experiencing fulfillment as a dance. She said, it's a call and response. You have to have an intention, otherwise there's no creation. Your job is to focus on something you want and put out a call, and then the thought pattern goes out like a wave into the universe. Then the universe responds. It's like a dance between you and the world. The trick is not to give up your intention too soon, just because you don't see any immediate response or because it does not come in the way you expect. Intend your deepest dream, untainted by fear and doubt. Hold an intention, 
let's say for attracting the right work or meeting new friends or a, a re, the right relationship or for everyday happiness, then trust that the universe is going to respond. You have to hold it longer than you think you should. And when you want to give up, don't. Realizing your intention and letting go signals the universe you trust what you need will be provided. Giving up is collapsing into doubt. There is an author, Elizabeth Jenkins, who tells of this powerful impression made on her one time when she read about the great theosophist and clairvoyant Alice Bailey, who described watching the energy field of a man sending out an intention. She saw the thought form go out and then she said she was able to see the responding wave of energy, the answer coming back from the universe toward the man. And at that moment, he gave up his intention. He let it go. I mean, he gave it up. He succumbed to doubt. And Alice saw the two energy fields diverge instead of coming together. They were almost coming together the moment he gave up. They diverged. Jenkins said she never forgot this powerful example of holding an intention or not, of what happens when we give up soon. So in thinking about light, I remember a particular time of darkness in my life, though there is not been just one such time. We all have some of them, more than one. But I was in a dark night of the soul, deep in a tunnel of despair. And I dialed the phone. I heard a friendly voice, someone who held the light for me and told me it would get better. Someone who prayed with me and told me ways I could help myself and allow God to help me also. And I made progress, and I emerged out of that dark tunnel. Reverend Ed Townley said, how can we adequately describe to others the experience of being that progress? Where are the words that can explain the joy of discovering that we ourselves are the light? the divine energy we've been seeking, the energy that allows us to make manifest an uplifted consciousness. Jesus clearly faced the same challenge. He used many different images in his attempts to get the idea across to diverse listeners. I think the image he uses most, however, is the image of light. <laughs> He wanted his listeners, as he wants us today, to find and recognize the light that is our true expression. I am the light of the world, he said. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He said, you are the light of the world. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. So let us remember this week and always, I am the light, and we together are the light. May we express it through our clear loving and light-filled choices. God bless you. Thank you. This is a song of mine. It's called uh, Let the Sun Shine Out. Yeah. Oh, you, some of you did pick up the, the words for the chorus. That's good. I'd really like it if you'd sing along in the chorus. <coughs> so therefore, I'll uh, sing it twice. Once so you can hear it if you haven't heard it before. And uh, another time for you to start singing along with me. I let the sun shine out. It's mine to give away. I just can't lose 
I've got more than I could ever use I let the sun shine out, it's mine to give away And when I do, I know it's true I can brighten up a cloudy day One more time I let the sun shine out, it's mine to give away And I know I just can't lose I've got more than I could ever use I let the sun shine out, it's mine to give away And when I do, I know it's true I can brighten up a cloudy day Yeah, thank you I've got the sunshine Sunshine in this heart of mine It is a spark of love come from the master flame But in my times of fear and doubt I get to think the light's gone out Until I let love blow the clouds away again Everybody! I let the sun shine out, it's mine to give away And I know I just can't lose I've got more than I could ever use I let the sun shine out, it's mine to give away And when I do, I know it's true I can brighten up a cloudy day You've got the power power of the sun inside and everything you need to shine your whole life through there may be times along the way when we see night instead of day but when we wake up the sun still shines through me and you last time i let the sun shine out it's mine to give away and i know i just can't lose I've got more than I could ever use I let the sun shine out, it's mine to give away And when I do, I know it's true I can brighten up a cloudy day And when I do, I know it's true I can brighten up a cloudy day Thank you! Amen! Thank you, Bruce, for sharing your gift of music with us. That's one of my favorite songs, and it's perfect for today. Just perfect. Now is the time when we bless our offerings. Since we are collecting them live, we invite you to go to our website and uh, unitynorthmn.org and find the donation button on the home page and give your offering there. For those of you in our building, we ask you that you could leave your offering in the basket by the door as you leave the sanctuary. And some of you like to mail checks, so you can find our address on our website and do that that way. Now, let us speak our offering, offering blessing. Join me, please. Divine love flowing through me now blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I am grateful. Together. I am grateful to be giving, to be giving from within. There's a bond dance in my life now. Now my blessing has been said. Verse. And now it's time for our community news. Today's our prayer chaplain is Nancy Helvig. And as you saw earlier, she is online. And you can reach her at the phone number, which is listed on our announcement here. And uh, she will pray with you. The men's group, facilitated by Noel Labine, is on the second and fourth Saturdays of the month. So the next meeting is March 22nd. It is from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. If you have any questions, you can call Noel and you can see the number on our screen. And now, is Kathleen around? She's coming. All right. Um, I'm going to let Kathy 
talk to you about the party program. Okay. All right, so um, on May 19th is Party Sunday. But leading up to that, let me just explain about this program. Um, the idea is that anyone here can throw a party of any kind. Uh, suppose you say you want to do an Italian dinner at your house, um, or you want to take five people to breakfast as your party. Or maybe you want to treat four pay people to a play in, in the cities or um, any kind of party you can imagine. It could be at your house, it could be somewhere else. But the idea is the party host names the party, selects the time, which can be any time between June and November over a six month period, and then um, decide how many can attend and the party host pays for the party. So your numbers attending depend on what, what you feel is affordable for you. And then the, the host submits a form describing the party, titles the party, and uh, writes down these details. And then the church collects the forms and creates a booklet for everyone to see of the parties that are going to be available to attend between June and November. And, um, and then everybody decides what parties they want to go to. The person giving the party has ascribed a certain cost to the party. And the cost would be like the fair market value, say, of having the Italian dinner. If you were going to have that same Italian dinner out, what would it cost? And then maybe tack $5 on because it is a fundraiser. And, and that becomes the cost of your party. So that's listed on the form as well. So you look at the booklet, you see all the parties that might be available, decide which ones you want to attend. And on party Sunday, then that's the time you can line up and buy the parties that you want for those six months that you want to attend. It's a fundraiser and it is an incredible fundraiser. It's a community builder. You may end up at a party with somebody you probably haven't met or talked to. So it's a great time for all, depending on the creativity and the parties chosen to do. So um, I did, this is our first announcement about it. So be thinking about what kind of party would you want to host? It can be something for kids. It can be dinners, lunches. Maybe it isn't even around food. It could be some kind of class you want to teach but serve a little something and call it a party. So think about it. And then uh, by next week, we'll talk to you about filling out the forms and what that looks like. So just want to get your mind spinning about parties for now. And come on up, Kathleen. Grab a mic. Yeah, great. Wow. Party. <laughs> All right, good morning, everyone. Happy St. Patty's Day. I like the green. I've been wearing green all week, so I couldn't wear green again today. <laughs> all right, I have two announcements. One is for Family Promise. Family Promise, um, we are uh, hospitality hosts again, coming up at the end of, <coughs> end of this month. And on our family table, over in, by the uh, drinking fountains, I have um, four families listed. We are providing some um, laundry needs for four families. So if you will take a look, um, I need all items by Easter Sunday, I believe. Yeah. <coughs> so a couple of weeks yet. Um, and all the families are looking for some laundry supplies for a one month you know, uh, supply. Um, and they have the specifics that they need. <coughs> the other item is family table. Fourth Thursday of the month is here. I'm looking for help. I'm looking for those who wish to help serve and prep the meal. I'm also looking for those who would maybe like to help buy the groceries with me. Um, we are serving as this is the month of March. 
uh, boiled dinner, kielbasa, potatoes, carrots, um, onions. We won't put rutabagas in this time, but I love rutabagas. We could put turnips in, but it's usually just potatoes, carrots, onions, and Polish sausage or kielbasa. Um, a sign-up is on that blue the table is directly in back there, and uh, if you could sign up before the 28th, which is when we serve, that would be great. And this is killing me. <laughs> Okay, had to make sure I got to the right next announcement. It is about our new class that is coming on April 1st. It's called Trusting Change, Finding Our Way Through Personal and Global Transformation. And it'll be with Reverend Tony Fish. So it's gonna be all Mondays, April 1st through May 13th. So it's seven weeks. It's 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Central on Zoom. And Reverend Tony is an Associate Minister at Unity Minneapolis, um, which is like the old Golden Valley for those of us that remember it. Um, and it's, the class is based on the book, Trusting Change, Finding Our Way Through Personal and Global Transformation, which is by Reverend Karen Herring. So the book is required for the class. Um, and uh, the, we will include a link on our website to be able to purchase that book. And um, Reverend Karen invites those of us on the cusp of great change, which is all of us today, to explore new possibilities emerging in our times. And she will provide us with 10 skills that will give us tools for living on that threshold and spiritual practices and inspiration so we can connect to our own inner wisdom. So register online um, and, or send an email to Brandy and let us know. Good Friday movie night, Jesus Christ Superstar. I know, I love it, I'm coming. So <laughs> it's 7 p.m. March. Uh, 9th, 29th, which is Friday, Good Friday. And uh, it'll be here in the sanctuary and it's the, the 1973 American version, which we all love. There will be a love offering, snacks and water bottles available. And Easter Sunday on the 31st, March 31st, will be our flower service at 10.30 a.m. And join us as we celebrate the power of resurrection and new life we have two musicians, Claire Van de Crummert and Judy Benar, and they'll be singing together during this beautiful ceremony. The lesson is Arise, and the flower ceremony is we will get together to decorate an Easter wreath in a sacred ceremony. We're gonna have a potluck right after service, bring a dish to share. We've got sign-up sheets outside in the narthex, and following our meal, we'll be drumming with Carl Schlatterbeck from 12.30 to 1.30. Bring your drums, bring your rattles. And that is all I have for announcements. So the next thing that we have is our affirmation slide. Will you join me please in, with our affirmation? Centered in prayerful intention, we give thanks for an overflowing abundance of spiritual awakening, prosperity, new members and children for Unity North Spiritual Center. And now, Reverend Kathy will lead us in our prayer for protection. Okay. Well, let's thank our team today. Thank you for uh, all that you did today, Tracy and Martha and Justin for being here. And for Wendy, great worship assistant today. And special thank you for Bruce. All right. Now I invite you to stand as we speak our prayer for protection and sing our peace song. Together, the light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. 
Remain standing, we'll sing the peace song together. <laughs> Begin with me. 